This is Twit. Uh, the UK is getting serious about self-driving cars. Commentary's RDM Group unveiled yesterday a new, somewhat insane-looking driverless car called the Lutz Pathfinder. Forty of the cars will be tested in and around the English borough of Milton Keynes later this year, and the UK government will publish sometime in the spring a code of practice for testing autonomous vehicles on public roads in the UK. Joining us to talk about this and other self-driving car matters is Philip Ross, who is a senior editor at IEEE Spectrum. Welcome to you, Philip. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Now, uh, first, let's talk about this uh, Lutz business. How is the Lutz Pathfinder different from, say, one of Google's self-driving Priuses? Well, there's about $150,000 per car difference, I'd say, just looking at it from a distance. <laughs> the uh, Google car is much, much more elaborate. I mean, it's designed to be an actual car going at normal speeds. The other one is a golf cart. So far as I can tell, from what the little, the little has been released, 15 miles per hour is the maximum limit, and that's the U.S. definition of a golf cart. <laughs> so uh, you understand that going slow is much, much easier because right. if, if you get a, if you need to stop, you have far more time to do it. So, Philip, I'm curious. So, this is the reason that uh, the Brits are so excited about this and ready to go because obviously in the US, uh, legislation is moving very slowly state to state on allowing uh, self driving cars on the road. But in, in here, they tend to be like real cars. So, all the Brits can handle is this crummy little golf cart? <laughs> well, maybe that's it. Um, I, what I think is interesting is how every car. Every country and it has its car right now. Everyone's trying to get in front of this parade. Uh, the Dutch, the Germans, and the British all made announcements just like this one in the past 30 days. Um, not exactly like this one, but in the general direction of being the first to have laws and rules and regulations to, for uh, self-driving cars. Uh, it, there's a bandwagon going on here. Everyone's afraid of looking hot, you know, old and busted. They want to be hot and new, and this is the way to do it. it I think some of these cars here were just put together overnight, <laughs> frankly. Um, I don't have any respect for them. Does that make it? Does that make sense? <laughs> wow, that's so harsh. But so in in the, the Europe, Google car, oh. the Google car works in part because it's mapped every squared centimeter. It's within inches of everything, and it's constantly updated. They keep driving around Mountain View, California, for a reason. Uh, they know that area. Uh, the British, I don't think they have designed to the same specs, which is why they are going under 15 miles per hour. It's it's not really the same thing. Philip, you've been to have you been to Europe? Uh, last summer I was in Germany. I got to try one okay. of their things. So be you noticed that them. some of the roads are rather narrow, right? So could this be part of the reason? I mean, in Paris you end up on these tiny little side roads, and even a little bit in London uh, and mm -hmm. other places, some of the old cities are not mm -hmm. really designed for the kind of driving we do in the U.S. Do you think that's one of the reasons that this kind of vehicle might be more palatable? Well, it's small, if that's what you mean, and it, I, I don't know about going slowly. Uh, anyone wants to be able to make it onto a highway. They want to be able to accelerate and pass. I don't think anyone could get from one city center to another, even from one mall to another, without having uh, a little bit of oomph in the car. So this is more a test of concept. They just want to see if it works at all. Um, nothing wrong with that. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. It, it could be, car. yeah. It could be that the UK may uh, beat the rest of the world in in actually approving legal, fully consumer oriented self driving cars, simply because it is so slow and weak and 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 so on and for limited use. I mean, I think this is for people who can't drive for one reason or another to get them to a local market or something like that. I suspect. Now, now Philip, you wrote an interesting piece this week for IEEE Spectrum in which you share the idea that counter to conventional wisdom, self driving cars either won't or shouldn't gradually evolve from. Um, uh, driver assistance like features. I've been I've been sort of repeating this idea as well that yo it's going to be gradual. We're going to you know cars will get increasingly automated to the point where they're suddenly one day will wake up and they'll be self driving. But you you uh, basically wrote about the idea that this is not how it is or will be. Can you talk about this idea? Yes, I, I'm not saying that's what I think because if I were able to predict the future, I'd be a rich man right now. <laughs> I would have predicted it 20 years ago and already have benefited. No one knows how this is going to play out. But the two main theories have been we're going to have evolution to full autonomy and we're going to have it in one fell swoop. And the reason why you might think you need it in one fell swoop is that the good is the enemy of the perfect. You're never going to be able to get over the hump. The last little bit that separates a car that mostly drives itself from one that fully drives itself unless you tackle it from the very beginning. That's the theory. There's much to be said for it. 
look at air, air blinders. I think you began with that. Airliners are now very heavily automated, and it's been a process that's going on for 30 years. And just yesterday, I believe the government was first, first broached the idea of using just one airplane pilot. Airplane. If you wanted to go to the bathroom, you'd have to get uh, some remote pilot on the ground working through telecom to take over the controls for you. Isn't that amazing? And they're not going to do it for 30 years. They could do it now. They could have done it 10 years ago. That's how slow things are when you put them on evolutionary timescales. If you want it to actually work, you might have to design it from scratch to be totally self-sufficient. Philip, I'm, Philip, I'm sure you've noticed that uh, self-driving technology or autonomous technology in cars is sort of like this creeping thing in that there are already a lot of cars on the road with a lot of autonomy. It's just that people don't necessarily think of it the way they imagined autonomy would be that they could park by themselves, that they have anti-lock brakes, that they can stop before you hit somebody, that they're, they're uh, giving you a, a more awareness of their you know, situational awareness. You know, if somebody's driving close to you, you know, if you start to go to the left, it's going to beep at you. Uh, do you think that you know, what will really happen, the more realistic view of self-driving cars for the future is that one day we'll realize that 85% of what our cars are doing is sort of autonomous, and then like going that last 15% might be a little bit easier? Not necessarily, because we've got uh, 95% now with airliners, and they still need a pilot and a co-pilot. Well, I well, think they do. They're in the air. They're going to drop out of the sky. I mean, this is, this is a little ah, bit different. The I mean, airplanes are easier. Airplanes are easier. They were more, 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 uh, more automated 20 years ago than even the leading car today, the Mercedes S-Class is now. Well, they, yeah. the air, airplanes certainly have no uh, telephone poles to, to, to drive into <laughs> and, and bicyclists and pedestrians to worry about until they hit the ground, of course. <laughs> yes. Philip Ross is at spectrum.ieee.org, and you can follow him on Twitter at pross356. Thanks for joining us today, Philip. Thank you.